Hi, welcome to Geekzilla. Today we're going to be looking at Street Wars NYC from Funky Skull Games. Hi right, guys, welcome back. Um, I'm Gopher, this is Mike, and this is Ian, the, the owner at Funky Skull Games. And we're going to be looking at this um, Street Wars game that you've done. So this is the first time you've had a video done for this? It's the very first video, yep. So this is Street Wars, and um, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Um, so Street Wars is my concept for a game that I felt was always kind of missing from the hobby. Okay. Um, there's lots of gang games available, things like Necromunda and everything, um, but there was no low level street like fighting games where you're using knives, baseball bats, and there wasn't such a focus on guns. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I was aiming for. Well, initially I was looking for a set of rules, couldn't find one, so I thought I could do it myself. Yeah. Um, and that was the avenue I went down, contacted sculptors, actually contacted a friend who I know was an editor for various rule sets that are available at the moment. Okay. Um, so he helped a lot um, in regards to me getting this game out. Um, just started taking it around friends, play testing it, getting their thoughts, um, getting artists involved to do my concepts of the street gangs, doing a lot of research on the actual street gangs as well, the various movies that are surrounding it from the 70s, mm -hmm. even the 60s, um, and then just going ahead with it. So it's very highly um, influenced by various movies, obviously. Yeah, so. um, I, I've got a big love of movies from New York. Not just, I'm obviously a big Warriors fan, but there was other movies available, like um, The Wanderers was another mm -hmm. big one, yeah. like Fort Apache, The Bronx, mm -hmm. seen all them, and even... Going Shot of Precinct 13 to some degree. Yeah, definitely, because that was that was another big one, both of them, the older version and the newer version, um, but yeah, great, great movies and just big focus on New York, and I know when I went over to New York, that was the big thing, I was like, oh, we've seen all these locations. Yeah, I was like going to the Ghostbusters Tower, and even went, <laughs> went to Coney Island, yep. and went to Mott Street for The Godfather, and there was a big, big focus on what I was interested in regards to movies. Super. So, you were gonna, you put this through Kickstarter, is that right? Yeah, we went and did a Kickstarter, we we never met the target the first time, um, and then when we did finally meet the target, we just got over enough to to get the kickstart where we needed, um, getting all the sculpts, all the moulds, and all the rules printed. Okay. You've got another company you run as well, which is yeah. the Flags of War. Yeah. Um, we've got a few of the bits and pieces down here, and you've just done another one with these yeah. um, Jacobean yeah, historical miniatures. As well as having a big interest in the gangs, I'm a big historical war gamer. I love. Um, even small scale mm -hmm. skirmish games to the big table games. Um, I'm not the best with the rules or the tactical part of it, <laughs> but I do. My I got into war gaming purely as a painter mm -hmm. first of all, and then it came a case that contacting clubs and just saying I might come along and then got into doing it. But I'm a my dad was a amateur historian, so he brought me up through interest in the Jacobite Rebellion, English Civil War, he used to run out his own reenactment regiment for the, the English Civil War, it was a Covenant regiment, so mm -hmm. I was brought up like some very bad photos. So was there a hole in the market for the Jacobites? The, the, yes and no, um, there's very, there is probably about three Jacobite ranges available at the moment, um, but there was nothing that I wanted. Okay. Um, I'm a big fan of chunkier figures and there's some lovely ranges out there but they weren't meeting the needs that I wanted mm -hmm. as a painter and when I was going to shows I was saying this to other folk and they agreed so I kind of went oh there's a, there's a space here people were telling me that they want what I want as well so I'll maybe put the feelers out that was a it was a more successful kickstarter than the Street Wars one and um, obviously I'm delivering a lot more figures mm -hmm. um, we're, but it's that's currently funded and it's going through the process of getting all the skills made. Cool. I was saying I was saying to Ian the other day, I'm actually after some of these myself. I want a unit of these guys for my uh, Kingdoms of Men army and Kings of War, um, which I've sort of based around various different bits of 
Scottish history and stuff like that. That's, that's what I'm trying to do with it. So I'm definitely after well, some of them myself. I'm aiming to do once I get all the range, we're going to do another Kickstarter for them to get this on the government forces. Um, but the idea is that I'll be going around the shows and doing like a a big campaign. Mm -hmm. We want to start from the start at the Battle of High, well, High Bridge. It was more, more it was a tiny skirmish. It was a the opening. It was a McDonald's all the way up to Culloden. That's interesting. Cool. Look cool. forward to seeing that. Yeah. Um, one of the things we've got, uh, Ian has very, very kindly donated pretty much a two style, a two player starter set. So we've yeah. got the little book. We've got the two packs of cards. These are the. So you've got event cards and you've got your weapon cards. Okay, dokie. So that's all your equipment and the events that go on during the game. And then you've got these two boxes done up like old VHS cassettes. Be kindly wind that Lily really making me smile when I saw that this morning. And <laughs> um, there's two gangs here. Two so gangs. Each comes with eight miniatures. It comes with the. If you want to open it, it comes with the cards inside, the stats cards. And also comes with a set of transfers. So, transfers. so that's your stack cards. That's your water slide transfers. And then you've got a left them open in case you want. Yep. Bag with the miniatures in it. So we'll get some close-up pictures of these so you can see them. We've got the painted ones. So we'll have plenty of pictures coming up. And um, hang on, just show right for the sculpting and stuff. It's really really characterful models. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, the sculptor done a great job on them. And as I said, um, Nick is pretty much a historical sculptor. Um, but I'd contacted him and asked him to do some samples. And from the other samples, uh, like there was loads of samples done for the range. And his was some of my favourite. And I kind of, I think he excelled in regards to his sculpting because he's kind of used to doing static poses, guys marching. And he, he done a great job with these. So, currently these are the only two gangs that are available? Currently the only two available. Um, we are, there's new concept art getting done right now. It's getting fed through from artist Daniel. Um, and we will be looking to do another Kickstarter as soon as I get enough from that. I need to get some sculpts made as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that I can try and sell it. Cool. Um, so, you subscribers out there have a chance to win this two player starter set. Um, what you're going to have to do is comment on this video and be subscribed to the channel. So we'll have a look once you leave a comment, make sure you're subscribed. If you hide your subscriptions, we won't be able to enter you into the competition, unfortunately, because we can't verify you are subscribed to the channel. Um, we'll draw the lucky name when we hit 500 subscribers. So get sharing it, get commenting, um, and this could be yours. So we'll cover the postage in the UK. If it's outside the UK, we'll give you the same value of postage and you cover the rest. So if you're overseas, we will send it to you, but you will have to cover the shipping on that side of it. But other than that, it's yours for free. Yep. Now we'll have links to all your stuff in the bit down below, um, so you can go and check it out. We'll talk about all this in a lot more in more detail at the end, once we're done, but what we're intending today is to show you how to play the game so it's not like a standard bat deck and um, it's more of an instructional video so yep. we'll go over um the yeah uh, so ian is going to show one of us two how to play the game probably going to be me or oh, so you've, you've played at least once you've yeah. got an idea of what um, you're doing so at least you know where you're coming from and um, we'll go over the table and all the the setup when we're out there and um We'll come back to you at the end and go over a few more bits and pieces. Sounds great. Okay. okay. We'll see you at the table. Cheers, guys. Okie doke. So, this is a setup we've got for the table. This is all um, provided by Ian. This is your demo setup you use at events? Yeah, we use this at Salute and we've used it at various of the Scottish shows, including Claymore and Carinade. Actually, won best dis participation game at um, Claymore last year. Nice. Okay, so as you can see, it's sort of like uh, New York, 1970s, all the, the graffiti everywhere. Um, if you like stuff like the get down, like me, this is awesome. This is quite clean for 1970s New York. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think you've painted all of this. Painted a lot of it. Um, I built the 
Terrain tiles, mm -hmm. built them on my own. Okay. Um, out of MDF. So 12 mil MDF at the bottom, 2 mil MDF at the top to give the raised areas and okay, scored okay. them all. And the buildings, I take it there's a, uh, buildings from a few different. There's um, three different types of buildings. Okay. Um, so all MDF buildings. Mm -hmm. um, the two here are basically that, that one and that, that one, one. Mm -hmm. are from Cerisa. Okay who do a lot of good buildings. Um, the one in the mid, the one here and the the pawn shop along with the platform and the trains okay. are actually from a Polish company called Multiverse. Okay, yeah. Um, again, a very, lot of Very in keeping, isn't it? It's yeah, he, he, he built a range for the Pulp City game. Uh, okay. um, and then he kind of moved into the, the Batman mm -hmm. games. So obviously it kind of fits in with them, the city. And these two higher, tall, taller brownstone buildings are from TT Combat. Okay, okay. And do they come with like these air conditioning units sticking out? No, so I've stuck them on, but they, I think they do sell certain air conditioning units. Okay. So I've, I think they possibly are TT Combat ones. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, doke. And like, so the, um, the resin cast pieces, like the, the skips, and these are as a there is a, yeah again some of them are like the telephone boxes and stuff they're from a company called um armacast okay. in america and we've got some from ainsty castings at like so this one from mm -hmm. here this is from ainsty and also tt combat's another one they do some nice crisp um mm. resin pieces yeah so what about the scaffolding, where'd that come from? Um, that's Multiverse again. Multiverse again. Yeah. Okay, so we'll try and put links to all of this in the um, the bit down below, so you can um, uh, jump in and try and find this stuff straight off. Uh, the cars are all James Bond cars. Are they? Uh, yeah, there was a magazine that was brought out a few years back. Okay. You collected all the James Bond cars. These are basically the cars from that. Including this? Yeah. Awesome. Right, okay. That one's not, that yeah, was just it, an old Matchbox bit, one, but right. yeah, they're pretty much, we've got lots more and they're all, all James Bond cars. You like pick them, them up on eBay for about £4. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll, as I say, we'll put links to this stuff in the, the bit down below. If you're interested in getting things in this sort of theme, um, you should be able to find it there. Now, the other question I wanted to ask about these is, see the likes of the, the street or is there any of that like decals or is it stuff you they're just all, hand? They're all decals I do myself. So you can get these off here? I've not started selling them because they can be quite intricate to, mm -hmm. to apply so I'm trying to, I'm looking at better ways to apply them okay. and then I'm possible looking at selling them. Okay, okay. So right, that's, um, this is pretty much the table we've got. Um, we'll uh, get on and set. <coughs> And again, as usual, I'm destroying the place. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, we'll get on and set it all up and get ready for the game. Cool. Now, we're going to go through what you would do at the start to set up the game. So I think you would agree, uh, 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 it's not points in this, it's uh, an amount of cash yeah. you have to spend on your game. So the, 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 whole, the whole concept of the game is based on doors. Um, because we have a campaign scenario, mm -hmm. you agree it on there, and obviously, as you go through the scenario, you collect more money, which yep. you can spend on more gang members and more weapons. Um, so we've kept that for the basic core mechanics as well, and just say, uh, both parties agree, how much are we gonna use for the game? You buy your gang members, you buy your weapons, and you can fight it out. Okay, okay. So what we're going to do with this one, we're just going to do a basic rumble scenario yes. to show the mechanics of the game in action. Um, I've got the um, Black Cobras. The Black Cobras who are um, in Black Kung Fu Gang. Yep. You've got the... I've got the Devil's Outcasts, which are the Skinhead Gang. Okay, okay. On the um, body side. On the, the cards, what we've got is you've got your character name, the, the gang they're from, the rank they hold, so you, what, the, what are the ranks, what's that? Um, so you've got each gang, well, there's all various ranks, so you've got the warlord who's the main guy, mm -hmm. um, you then have lieutenants, and 
you've got the street soldiers, which are just basically your 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 normal guys, and then mm -hmm. you've got the new bloods. Yeah. Um, you can have as many new bloods in the game as you want, but in the the, the campaign, obviously, the, the idea is that the, the guys that will rank up into mm -hmm. street soldiers, street soldiers can obviously go up to lieutenants, but nobody can go into a warlord unless a warlord is actually taken out in the campaign. Right. Okie dokie. So then you've got the cost underneath that. So I take it because your warlord has a zero dollar cost, it's because every gang is going to have every, one. Every gang has to have one. Yeah. Okay. Um, Lieutenants are obviously a bit more expensive at 30, street soldiers are 20, um, and new bloods are $10, but we also have MVPs um, and who are ha guns for hire almost, mm -hmm. um, so they come in at $50. Most valued player? Uh, most violent player. <laughs> nice, like it. Um, okay, so underneath this we've got your stats, so there's funk, skill, fight, tough, and range. Yep, each of the stats are based on polyhedral dice. So when you're rolling for whatever stat you need to carry out, you'll roll the dice it tells you within there. So okay, so um, my warlord has a funk of 10. Now, funk's initiative, is that correct? Um, to do with funk, that? funk is basically used for a, a number of things within the rules, but the main purpose of is to activate your gang members. Okay. Um, Initiative is based on a d6, but activating each one of your gang members will go through and you will roll their funk dice. Okay, so my guy has a d10 and um, some of them have, uh, the other ones have d8s and d6s. Yep. So um, each skill has, as you say, a dice underneath it. The, the sort of bigger uh, value of the dice, the better they are, I take it. Yeah, because the everything's based on a target number. The target okay. number for every single stat is four okay um if you roll a d10 or a d6 it's still a four and obviously you've got a bigger opportunity yeah of doing that in a d10. so if it's a d6 it's a 50 50 shot yes if it's um a bigger dice you've got more chance of actually succeeding exactly. right okay uh that seems nice and warlords simple, you'll also notice have three circles above them on their picture yep um, these are actually command points okay. that can be used only by warlords. Some lieutenants can use them because they might have a special ability to give them one. Okay. Um, and what command points do is they can activate gang members within a, a radius of the warlord. Right, okay. It can be a group action, so like a run. He can basically tell everyone within that radius to run with him, or he can basically fully activate another gang member. It doesn't affect the warlord's activation. Mm -hmm. But he always has to activate to carry it out. He has to pull a skill. T he has to do a skill test. Yeah. Okay. To carry that out, and it doesn't actually affect the activating gang members' activation as well. So they could ultimately do two. You can only use one per turn. Okay. But you could have someone who's fully activated, and then he could tell them to activate again. Okay. Like that. That sounds a little bit like um, and it's familiar from Thrustgrave for me. They've got a similar right. sort of thing, mm -hmm. and where your main guy can activate other right. folks. So it's got a sort of feel for that. Um, underneath that, we've got special abilities that everyone has. Yeah. Um, obviously, not all characters will have special abilities. I'm assuming everyone has a special ability. Oh, okay. Um, but the the low level guys will just have one. Mm -hmm. um, the street so, so new bloods have one. Street soldiers will have two, and the lieutenants will have three, and the warlords will have four. Okay. Um, these can be selected when you're building your gang. Okay. Um, so each one can have various impacts on what you're doing during the battle. Okay. Well, if, as and when we come to the the special abilities, we'll go through them at the time. So when we're first setting up, we've bought a gang. Yep. We've bought our equipment. And um, what's the next thing we would do? Is set up the scenario. Okay. So we would go to the scenario initiative and we would just basically roll 1d6 each okay. and look at who then controls the initiative for the scenario, not the actual game yet. Okay. And that would entail you then setting up each of the objectives, which we've got in the middle of the table, and going, at, this is pretty much the only I go, you go moment yep. of it. Okay, okay. So we've got um, this rather dashing pimp. He was um, a freebie figure with a Kickstarter. Yep, His name's Randall St. Clair. Awesome. Sa Randall St. James, sorry. Randall St. James, okay. Uh, he's a saint. So um, if we interact with him, we can get a... Uh, a flash. A, yeah, a fl and that's kind of like a, a buff, possibly. Yes. Yeah. 
possibly. If you collect it, it will give you a boost during the game, um, but it can also be detrimental if you roll a one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, a, we've got this old deer. So um, she's a set, so there's two types of loot objectives. You've got set as in the loot, loot objectives, mm -hmm. which we're using as characters. You yep. can obviously use the tokens that we supply for the game. And then you've always, we have other ones which are building or car loot objectives. Okay. So the idea of them is they can get placed in a, a car or a building and you would need to break in to get them. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going for the citizen one, you're obviously mugging them. Right, so that's a mugging, that's a bloody bloody. Yes. Right. And um, this is definitely a game aimed at the more mature player. Yes, um, definitely. Which is awesome as well. Now this here is the weapons marker, I can see that on it. So if we find that, we you, can... You basically increase, your, you, you have the chance to increase your weapon that you currently hold. Chance to find something so better. So you might have someone who's only got, you've been able to afford like a small weapon, like a knuckle duster, mm -hmm. but he can actually interact with that. It might actually increase them up to uh, a large weapon. Or there's protect you can also collect on a nine you can collect a Molotov cocktail and on a ten you can actually get a pistol. Right, okay. It's so the only gun that you can get. You can buy guns but the the, the, the it's not a gunny game. Yeah, but um, let um, expensive enough to sort of yeah, to you from buying them. Yeah. Okay, dokie. Um, and the other thing that I remember from when you were showing me this um, at the club the other day yep. is that you can search anywhere at any time to try and find a yeah, bottle the or a brick. The idea is that it is 1970s New York, it is a bit of a mess at this point. Um, a lot of the buildings are crumbling and stuff so you can actually use your activation and search and you can pick up a brick mm -hmm. and you can then use that as a ranged weapon. The idea is it's a brick or a bottle, Yeah, you can just basically search for them and use them. It does. It's not a huge weapon um, but it can obviously it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a ranged weapon that can be used and um, okie dokie so if we chuck a dice each it's a d6 isn't it yep okay so we are rolling for scenario initiative scenario initiative yeah so you have the scenario initiative okie dokie so i've won the initiative for placing the scenario objects um, how do we go about this? So as I said, this is the only real I go, you go moment of the game. So you would go and we've obviously, we're only having one of each yep. objective. But you select whatever one you want, you'll roll for it and it's based on random deployment. Okay. Um, the idea is that you roll on a result, so you roll a d6, on a result of one of six, you place it six, from six to twelve inches from the centre, mm -hmm. so between six and twelve. And then on a two, three, four, five, you um, you again from the table edge. Mm -hmm. You'll place it six to twelve inches from that table edge, and you can't place one six inches from another objective. Okay, so it has to be six inches between them. Yes. Right. Okay. So I'll roll a d six for the first one, and I'm going to pick. Um, I think I'll go with the the Flashman. One. Right, so from six to twelve inches from the centre, I'm going to have him hanging about outside the phone booth. As he would do, waiting, yep, for, waiting for the call coming in. I'll there you go. For the next one. And I'll place the the loot objective. So I, again six. it's a six. So at this point you could move any cars. If okay. you needed, um, but we've got a good one. Um, so from the centre, I can place that objective in there. And as I say, you would just come into contact with that car, and you'd be able to collect that objective. And well, you'd be able to roll for a it. A skill check to, to sell. Yes. It. Yep. Okay. Um, on the next one, I'll go for the wee old lady next. So, so a four, four, two, three, four. So from your table edge, six to twelve inches. The reason we did the 6 to 12 inches is because most table edges, like here, have buildings. So it makes it a bit more difficult to place some of them. She's looking for the cat in amongst the, the rubble there. We'll go for the last weapons objective. 3, 2, 3. Place it there. So that's us placed all the objectives. I'll move it up a bit so that it's 
because we'll say this is the deployment zone. Yeah. So after that, what do we do? Um, after that point, we basically go on and play the game. Okay. You have the scenario initiative, so you can, after this deployment, you can get to pick whatever deployment zone you wish. So the idea of that is that all the objectives are on the table. First of all, um, it's not all heavy sided and you, you obviously being in control, you go, I prefer to look at that side or that one. Okay. So that's up to you. Um, I think I'll go for the back edge. Okay. Okay. So you can just deploy your figures. Okey doke. So, so at this point you would obviously go through the, the scenario. This is just a rumble. Um, okay. So the, the main objective is to fight it out and collect um, as many objectives as possible. Um, there's eight scenarios or okay. six scenarios. Um, and basically each one has a different purpose um, and the victory points are based on various different things. So it might be the loot objectives are more victory points than this one or it's the actual fighting. Right. And in the rumble, the loot objectives, majority of the points are based on who you take out. So if you're taking out the warlords, you're getting quite a number of points. Okay. Them, so. Lady ho. So do we take the, obje the the event cards at this point? Yes. Or? So we'll each draw three event cards. So I'll let you go first, go card. I'll take this one. And you said there's no duplicates in amongst this, so whatever you get, yeah, so you will get three event cards um, for the whole game. You can place them wherever it tells you. It says, so you've got the name of the event, mm -hmm. the event. you've got the use, so at what point of the game you can play it. Is it at the activation game, before the vac activation, before someone carries out a certain type of action, so whether it's a ranged attack, so you can do certain things like you can cancel that out or like a gust of wind will make the change of the direction kind of thing. Right. So if it's a Molotov cocktail. Um, and then obviously it gives you the outcome of okay. what happens. Um, you only can play one per turn and you only get the free for the whole game. Right, okie dokie. Yep, so at this point we would then go on to the actual game initiative. Okay. And whoever then has the game initiative controls the game. So you can determine, you can activate one of your gang members by rolling their funk dice or you can say you want the other person to activate one of their gang members just one they don't control the initiative it, it comes straight back to you ah right okay i thought actually handed it over no just just so. you tell them to activate any one of their gang members and the idea is because of certain rules you might want them to move rather than you moving mm -hmm. Um, certain there's a rule um, that you can react so if your gang member hasn't moved or activated this turn um, and one of the rival gang members finishes within four mm -hmm. inches of them they can actually carry out an automatic attack on them okay so I would say to you to activate one of your guys but you choose which one you activate I take it yes yeah okay so we'll chuck for the initiative for the game then yep you get three, four. I get four. So you get to go first. So as I say, you pick whatever gang member you want. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the higher the rank, the, the, the supposed easier chance of them activating. Okay. On the result of a four, regardless, as I say, regardless of the dice, mm -hmm. on the result of a four, they activate. You can carry out your activation. On a two or a three, they can still carry out a walk action, but nothing else. They can't okay. move into contact with anything, and they can't search for bricks or bottles. And on the result of the one, they actually don't do anything, yep. and initiative will switch to the opposing player. And they still count as activated? They still count as activated. Okay. Right, I will go first, and I will activate um, my Warlord, because reasons. He uses a D10 for these funk, and I need four plus for them to be able to yes. fully activate. I got a four. So you're fine. So you can, one of the ones I need to check his special abilities, I'm sure he's got super flash. He does. So he can move up to eight inches. So standard movement, everyone moves six. six. 
Yes. And then you can do a so dash you can, action. So you can walk and do something. Mm -hmm. So you can walk and carry a mug in, move into contact with a flash, search for a brick or bottle. Mm -hmm. You can do a run, but you can't do anything after it. Mm -hmm. A run is six inches plus the result of a D6. Okay. So you can basically up to 12. And But either a walk or a run, mm -hmm. you can move into contact and carry out a, a fight. Okay. Right, so for my warlord, what I am going to do is I'm going to run, so you'll move and go an extra distance. Now, he can. He'll he moves at eight instead of six as yep. usual, and then and I then throw a result to Over see how far for these run. And you get a six. What? 14. So he is super fast. And he can go 14. So even going around the phone box, he's got plenty to come along here. Yeah. And then in contact with Luke Marker straight away. I'm sorry, as usual, I am trashing the place because that's my MO apparently. Um, then it stays with me and I the roll for another. still with you, you still keep going. The only until way, I fail all I want will, to. Yeah, you'll only lose initiative if there's an event card played, you roll a one or you lose a fight. Okay. Which we'll cover. Right, so for the next one I will go with um, my lieutenant. Um, Black Belt Jim. Black Belt Jim. He's going to try and do a run action as well. Now he moves the normal six inches. Well, oh no, I have to do his initiative. Don't I think I? I think he has super flash as well. Okay, but before I do that, I have to roll to see yes, if you need he to activate. activate and I get a three. So he can only carry out a walk. Okay. He can't do anything else. Yep. Yes, he does also have super flash, so he can go up to eight. So he'll walk up to there. So the style of obviously these guys is that they might be a bit more quicker on their feet. And obviously the style of the Devil's Outcast is that they're a bit more tougher, so they're quite hard to hit. Okay. Um, you do these token sets as well, don't you? Yep, we've got Martin at War Bases does the uh, tokens for us. Um, he's quite, a f I've been friendly with him for a number of years, so he's, he's helped us out and we sell them on the website. Excellent. Um, next, I'll go for um, Rayway. Not a good one for me to say. <laughs> uh, he has a funk of a D6. And he gets a 6. So he can do two actions. So he can walk, or he can, can do something, or he can have him run. And you said pre measuring is okay, doesn't pre measuring is fine. And is it the... So with that, he would come into contact with it. Okay. He would roll a d10. So a, the weapons check. token is right there. Um, yep, so you roll a d10. Do I not do, need to do a skill to, to search no. it? No. Oh, because it's not no, just... No, you're just basically looking. Okay, so I'll chuck a d10 to see what he finds The, idea, the idea is it's like a, a stash bag yeah. or something. And he so gets got a two. two. Um, so you don't get anything. Okay. So there's nothing but some junk. But if you'd rolled a three or a seven, he would have upgraded his weapon dice. Uh-huh. Well, oh, actually upgraded his weapon type. Okay. Um, on an eight or a nine, he would have got a Molotov cocktail. And on a ten, he would have got a pistol. Okay, okay. So, but that's it gone now. Nobody else can no one else that. can get it. Okay. So it's a good start there, go for. <laughs> My usual luck. As is always, I don't think this is going to end well for me. Yeah, I'll go with Kaleem. And he is also a d6 on his funk though. He gets a 3, so again he can only walk. He can only walk. And he just walks 6. So he's just going to saunter up the road towards you. And then for my last one, which is Little Fred. Uh, he has a d6 for his funk as well, 
and gets a five. So he's going to do the double movement. Right. So it's a six plus a d6. So that's two, so he can go eight. Yes. And because I didn't fail or fluff any of those initiative rolls, I've managed to activate my full gang before yep. you've had a go. And obviously, as I said, you could have chosen to make me move. Yeah. But at this point, there's not, there's not really much purpose. No. So now we'll just switch over to me to do the exact same. I can't lose initiative, so I'll just keep going through all my gang members. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'll go with Tremor, who's the warlord. Um, he'll activate on a D10. So he just he just gets a walk. Two, so all he can do is walk. He's slow and cumbersome. Um, normally you'd play the game more spread out, but we've sort of started a bit closer in just to make sure we get into the action a bit quicker to show the mechanics of the game off. Um, I'll then go for Animal, who's my lieutenant. Okie doke. Um, he activates on D8. So he's an 8. Um, he doesn't have any skill sets that will help him at the moment. But I'll roll. Rolling for an animal to run. So you'll run seven. So when you roll a one, you fail. Yes. Um, if, is it, has any of them got a skill that if you get the maximum, they get a bonus? No. No. I've not done anything okay. like that. Okay, no, it was just a. Um, I'll go for Bill, one of my street soldiers. He's also quite a killer during the game. Um, he will run. He's a D6 rolling for Bill to activate. So he activates and I'll make him run, run. So he can run. Facing's not a thing in the rules either. Yeah. So, he's so you're face. considered to be able to see D6 because yeah. you're looking about yourself. Okay. We'll go for beans. So it's six. I'll roll, I'll roll for him to run. Rolling for beans to run. He'll be a nine to it. And the last guy the last and the last guy is Paddy. Four. And we'll get Paddy to run. He's a nine to it. I can see like these nines. So you can actually jump on cars mm -hmm. and you can slide over cars to try and get a bit more um, Starsky and Hutch-esque mm -hmm. moves over bonnets and stuff. So when it comes to moving over the obstacles, um, anything up to an inch, basically it's fine. You just go straight across Yeah, it. just straight over it. Um, anything above that, it requires a skill test. Mm -hmm. um, so you would roll your skill. Um, so if there's like a distance, so say you were running, mm -hmm. you would run up to that, carry out your skill test, and it's the exact same for jumping. You, if you pass the skill test, you carry out the full movement that you'd planned. So mm -hmm. if you've moved up to the car, you were wanting to move a total of six inches, you'd move up to the car, do your skill test, you'd carry out the full movement. On a two or a three, you still carry out the movement, but you're just basically over to the other side. Okay. And no more. Yep. And on a one, you don't do anything. You sort of um, stop at the barrack. You base. stop at the barrack wherever you move, but mm -hmm. if you were doing a jump, say you were jumping from a height, uh -huh. on a one, you miss your jump. And you actually fall. Yeah, so you can do stuff like jumping. You the can jump. Across. Yeah, there's, it, there's, it's obviously as, as, as long as it's within the distance and the height, you can do it. And awesome. as I said, you were looking at doing a a different supplement that will allow bigger jumps. And we'll talk about that yeah. at the end. Yeah, that sounds quite interesting. What um, the idea you've got for that? So um, that's the end of the two gangs activating, and um, we have some end of turn stuff that we work out so if you had if your warlord or your lieutenants had taken any hits mm -hmm. they can actually do some recovery right you can also do recovery on your low level guys is only on a stunned okay you can't you can't recover any hits you can't recover from knockouts and no one can recover from being a casualty mm -hmm. um, we would obviously remove all the tokens but there's also the citizen um, loot objectives. Yeah, they actually move mm -hmm. around the table to okay. make it a little bit more difficult. Yep. So, like, so the only one we've got is the old lady. So we will actually roll. Does the no? He doesn't move. The flash doesn't move. Oh, okay. He just stays where he is. 
the old lady will move. Okay. So there's like some scenarios that will have four citizen loot objectives mm -hmm. on the table at the start. Right. So the idea is that they'll continuously move about the table and people will try to run after them. Okay. Um, and then we look to see if the police turn up? Yep. Um, after turn one, you roll for the, not, not the first turn, but after that, we'll roll to see the police turn up. Mm -hmm. um, the chances of that increases depending on what you have done on the table. So yep. if you're carried out a break-in, if you're carried out a mugging, a killing, uh -huh. um, the cops can turn up. The, there's then various rules on what happens. Anyone can move the cops because the cops will only ever move towards the nearest gang member. Okay. Regardless of who it is, they'll turn up on one deployment zone, uh -huh. which you roll for but the cops will always go for the nearest gang member. Mm -hmm. They'll always try to arrest first. Yep. If you defy them by refusing to stop while getting arrested, they mm -hmm. can actually then go about try to shoot you. <laughs> ah. Okay, so uh, obviously there'll be better land than us and stuff. Like, so if we go through that process then of moving these... Yeah, so if you want, you can roll a d10 for the old lady. Now, we do this on the board because... Uh, we use the, the direction of the D10 to determine the move. It's just a six inch movement, and she would move... That way. Six inches this way. So she would just move over here. And I take it, if they hit the edge of the table, they just They would just move along. Exact yeah. same for buildings. They would just bounce along, yep. rather than moving off the table or okay, inside okay. a building. So, the, the number in the dice was... Irrelevant, it's yes, just it's six just inches direction. in the direction that the dice points. You can also use a scatter nice dice. Yeah, nice wee um, movement technique. Okay, so after that, is it just tidy up from the end of the tidy up, Take the tokens off and start again with the initiative okay. and going through your gang members. Right, we'll be back in a second with turn two. So Again, we'll just go for um, initiative, game initiative. Okie dokie. Um, roll on a d6 each. Eight. Four. So uh, you get it that time. I've got the initiative this turn. I need to think about this one. Yeah, I'm going to look at getting my warlord to move into contact with a flash. So he's on a four, so he's fine. So you yep. can just basically move up to six inches, which is okay moves into contact with a flash, and with the flash, mm -hmm. all I'm doing is I collect it. So, right. yeah. I don't need to roll or anything. I basically just take the flash. Okay. So. And I can spend this at any point that I want. So basically that's him done the deal. He, he walks up, gives yes. you some money, and he jigs off. Yes. Okay. And I can use that at any point that I want during the game. Mm -hmm. I determine before I go into a fight, do I want to take it, take that chance, try and get a boost. Mm -hmm. And if I get a one, which I, I, I tend to get quite a bit, I'll have a very detrimental effect okay, okay. on me. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's um, it's energy tablets, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll then move on to, I'll activate beans. And the idea is that he's going to move into contact with the loot objective behind him, the old lady. So here we go, we're yep. in the worst situation. He's activated, doesn't do anything, and initiative's now with you. Yeah, okay, okay. So I'll go with show one. So you're in contact, all you need to do is activate them, and then you can try and do the, the break in. So I'm going to break into this car, which. So you need to do the activation first. His D10. funk is a D10, and I get a one! So, so he's activated and doesn't do anything and initiative yep. switches back to me. He's like, oh, I forgot my fend. <laughs> <laughs> That's my typical roll in there, isn't it? Um, okay, so yep, it so goes back, back to, me. to you. So I'll go for Paddy. So I won. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here all day. Right, um, so he doesn't do anything. And initiative switch back to you, Wolf. Yep. And this time I will go with my lieutenant. He activates in a D8. He is Black Belt Jim. And he gets a six. six. So he actually gets to get somewhere. So um, here we go. Ta. Um hey. you can ultimately run. Mm -hmm. And as I say, you can run up 
into contact and you'll get a bonus. A fleet attack, so you can charge. And you'll get a bonus for charging. Uh -huh. But you now, would need to roll, uh, so he's well, eight he inches. Moves eight inches, but he's going to have to go across the car probably. Uh, um, no, that's not, that's back real gym here. Oh, I thought this was him. I was looking and you at can the move around. Checks. You can move yep. around um, terrain as well. Okay. It's not a, you don't need to move forward. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, I got that. It was just I was thinking about for the distance if that was him. But okay, yeah. So I'm going with this this chap here, and it's a D6, which is three on top of the eight. So he's got plenty of movement. He's got the eight. Yeah, because he could get. Yeah. So you can move into contact with my big guy. So that's my warlock. Yep. And I'm going to roll for my flash. Okay. So as I say, I'll roll a D10. So he's got to take his energy tablets. He gets a five, um, and he upgrades to a plus one on any dice. Okay. So I will obviously take that on my fight dice. Right, yeah. Um, so I roll for... Well, the way the fighting works is it's opposed rolls. Yeah, right, okay. So it's not a case of that you attack and then I defend. It's opposed rolls. We both fight it out. Whoever wins a roll mm -hmm. um, will then use their weapon to cause some damage and defend, the other person will defend, but you still need a four. So you right, can, you, you, need, yeah. you need a four, regardless of what happens, is you can win a fight on a two or a three, but you don't actually hit me, but you can carry out a push or uh -huh. a, a throw. Right. So say you're near a, a car or a terrain piece, mm -hmm. you can actually throw them into that, or like, ideas like throwing them through a window or yep. something like that or, or if you were fighting on top of a, a, a raised platform mm -hmm. or a building you can push them off it it's still caught that would probably end up killing them yep um and on a one you, no one's one okay and if both the results are the same it's a draw now my fight stat on black belt gym is a 10. same i'm a um, 10. now for the he has a special ability called Flashman, which uh, means he's already got Flash on him. So you can do the exact same. Yep. So he will throw a dice for these Flash as well, and he gets a ten. Ten. So you've got a plus two. Okay. For your Flash. Right. So, so you can you can choose that to be your fight dice. Yeah. So you get a plus one for charging and a plus two for your Flash. I've got a plus one for my Flash and I've also got a special ability which is the very first attack or ranged attack, I get a plus one. Okay. It's called First Blood. Right. It's only used once. I'll throw my dice first and I get a three, three. plus three is six. Six. But I'm a, I'm a nine. Does that modifier to yes. beyond the four? Yes. It does. So you don't actually, the modifier counts towards your Yeah, it would, it would, it would okay. give you a hit. So you, I got six, you got nine. Nine, so. Plus two? Two, yeah. So you've definitely won. I've won the fight. So okay. now what would happen is each of your characters have got their, we their weapons card. On the weapons card, it tells you um, how many D6 you roll for that weapon. Right? Again, yep. it's fours. But there's a difference in the rule in regards to if you get a six, it's a critical hit. Okay. And you can't save it. Mm -hmm. So I give you an automatic hit and you don't do anything with it. You just take that hit. That's so if you get a six. If I get a six yep. on any one of my weapons yep. dice. Um, so I'll you've hit me, I don't hit you, even though I got past the four. Yeah, you've not You've hit won me. the fight and yes. you're smacking me. Yep. yep. So, But I've also got a... Uh, a special special ability mm -hmm. it's called a small package yep. and it's got an sk at the end of it so Which that means skill. it's a skill mm -hmm. and i need to unlock it before i can do anything with it okay. so this will give me an extra weapons dice so he's armed as long as he's armed with that weapon mm -hmm. and he's got that ability so it'll only work if you've got a small weapon yeah so he's got the six which gives him the extra d6 so he'll roll three d6 yep his weapon dice. Okay. Looking for sixes. Right. So I've got two threes which don't do anything, yep. and I've got one four. So, so that's, that's one normal wound. So it's not a hit. It's not yet. It's not set in stone. You've got a toughness. Mm -hmm. So you roll your toughness skill. My tough is six, and I'm looking. Am I looking to beat Just four? A four? Four or more. So it's not like if you get a five, I'd need to get a five. No. Okay. You just need a four, just to cancel it out. And I get a three, a so three. I don't. So you don't cancel it out. He is a lieutenant, so he takes one of the knuckle dusters and mm -hmm. puts it on his card. 
to, to show that he's taken a hit. Okay. So, the way damage works, uh -huh. you've got your stats, now you've taken a hit, will all drop one level. So a D8 becomes a D6? D6. Yeah. Okay. And the way that the, the damage works, if you take so if you take enough hits to make your dice drop below a d6 on your funk stat then you roll a damage roll okay okay basics of it warlords most times uh, if you choose your warlord is a d10 uh -huh. right so you can ultimately take three hits yeah your lieutenants two hits because they would take the one hit second hit will take them down and then the third hit mm -hmm. would take them below the d6 okay um, and what would happen is you would then roll the damage. Your small guys, most of their funk dice are D6s, mm -hmm. so they can only take one hit. Yep. So they would take one hit, they can't drop below a D6, Okay. so they would go straight to the damage roll, and the idea is that they get out of the game quite quickly. Okay. So, yep. he's fine at the moment. Mm -hmm. Well, I won the, the you fight. You won the fight, so, so I now have the initiative. The initiative goes back to you. Yep. And I've got two guys to activate. So I'm going to look to move in my lieutenant. I'll try and activate animal. And you activate on a D8. Um, so he activates on the yep. eight. It doesn't need to run in any movement. Move straight in. So he's okay. going to charge in to your guy. Yep. And now I've getting a plus one for charging you. Mm -hmm. And I also get a plus one for outnumbering you. Okay. So. Again, it's the exact same, pose rolls, mm -hmm. we'll just fight it out, Yep. Um, and you can still fight as normal. So he is a d10 fight, but I'm on a plus two, I think he's a d10 in it as well. He's a d10, yep. And the, the, the flash is worn off? The flash is worn off. And his things are one use ability? Yes. Yeah, okay dokie. So I've got a base d10, you've got? A d10 plus two. Plus two, plus yes. one for charging, plus one for, one for outnumbering. Okay, um, do you want to go first? Seeing as you yep. seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, eight, nine. So and you're I get a two. two. <laughs> um, so I flip so it completely again. I've won. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't have any um, special abilities that will upgrade his dice um, or weapons dice. So okay. he's he's armed with a crowbar, which is a large weapon. He'll just fight you with three. D6. Okay. Rolling for animals, weapons, and I get two ones and a three. So, so I don't nothing. actually do anything to you. <laughs> so you're fine. Mm -hmm. I don't get anything if I was to come round and fight you again. I don't get anything extra. I'll never get the plus one for okay. outnumbering. You don't get it if you if you get more than. Yeah, it doesn't stack. Yeah, it doesn't stack. Okay. So what do I want to do? Well, your last guy. Bill. Right, we will go in and try and fight. So I'll try and activate him. I'll activate on the D6. So he's a four, so he's fine. And he's in the six inches, so he can move into the contact. And again, he's got the plus one for charging, yep. and he gets a plus one for outnumbering you. Yep. So his fight dice is D8. Okay. You'll be. A D8. Be oh yeah, because I'm downgraded. I should have been a D8 last time as well. That's fine. Sorry. So a D8 and I'm on a plus two. That's because I've taken the wounds. Well, at two seconds, I've got a, a brawler skill. Okay. So I can roll a D8 to try and unlock it. Okay. Which will give me a plus one in my fight. So I get that. So the four is the target number. His fight goes up by one. So I'm on eight plus three. Okay, and I'm on a D8. Eight. Oh. <laughs> There's no even any point in me rolling the dice. And he gets a two. Yeah. Right, so, so again, he's getting malky. Yep. So I've won. Mm -hmm. He's armed with a, uh, a knife. Yep. Which is a bit more dangerous. Okay. So I'll roll four d6 for that. I'm in the <laughs> So two twos and two threes. Great. With. Um, so this. Uh, uh, Black Belt Jim's living up to his name and blocking all the hits that are coming yep. in. The nunchucks are swinging. That was it, and it would now move over to you to yep. activate. Little Fred, uh, he activates, he's got a funk of a d6, so... 
gets a three, so he can only do a walk action. Yeah. He will saunter nonchalantly over towards your pack of guys. And that'll be him done. Then I'm going to go with Ray Ray. He gets a six, so he can do as much as he can. Yep. Um, he's going to try and charge into combat, so he moves eight. Oh, no, he only moves six. Six. Uh, plus a d6, which is five, which so is five. 11, which is more than enough to get him down there. Yep. So he will charge into him. So he'll get the plus one for charging, but he'll not outnumber. Yeah. There's too many. So, uh, Lily fights with a d8. And plus one for charging. You attacked Bull, who again is uh, a brawler. So you can uh, try and unlock his skill first. Okay. So, gets it. Fine. So he gets that. So he's a d8. Plus one. And I'm a D8 plus one as well. Okay. So I get seven. And I get nine. <laughs> right, so you win. So you're rolling damage against Bill. me now. And I'm back on to the 4D6. Mm -hmm. Let's hope to do a bit more damage. Nice. Right. That's so you've taken one critical hit. Yep. You can't save that. Nope. Right. So, so that is a damage roll. Yeah. But I've also got a four, mm -hmm. so you, what you're wanting to do is you want to roll your toughness dice. Uh, his to toughness because is a d6. These, they, they do stack and it will be a minus one mm -hmm. to your roll. And he doesn't save it, so he's so, taking two damage. So you roll for the damage and you'll come in, uh, you roll on a d6. Okay. And you're on a minus one. So, so two. You rolled a, f a three, uh -huh. but you would be knocked out. But because of the minus one, mm -hmm. you're actually wasted. So you're dead. Oh. Well, we don't say dead because obviously the campaign yeah. rules, you could be going to hospital. Yeah. So, um, like, so it, oh, like a lot of these yeah. games, you've got a chance to save yeah. critically injured characters so afterwards. He is removed. So in, in the movie scene of this, he's basically running and he's turned around and as he's running, he's running too far and just run onto the knife. Yeah. Oh. And he's replaced by a nice little chalk marker now oh, to right. say that he's, he's gone. <laughs> so that's going to have a major impact on the police turning up yes. because somebody's so been wasted. It would be a uh, plus one to the, the, okay. the roll at the end of the turn. Right. Um, now, I lost the fight, so initiative would go to you, but you don't have anyone I don't left. have anybody, so it goes back to you to activate your last guy. And my last guy is um, Kaleen, and he activates on a d6. Three, so all he can do is walk. And not he's, much luck. No, he's going to go up to here. And that's me. So it's the end of turn stuff again? The end of turn stuff, so you can also go about it whatever you want. Um, but we have no damage to recover from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we well can, I've got one on my lieutenant. So you can. So you can roll a skill test as it is at the moment. Which is downgraded from a D8 to a D6 because yes. he's taken one wound. So you can do that. So, and is it, I take it it's just a 4 plus I'm looking yep. for? Gets a six. So he's fine. He can remove. So he shakes off that wound. Yeah. Okay. And then his stats go back up another one. Yes. Awesome. Um, so that's the damage. And these only phase. only lieutenants and warlords that can do that. Yeah. Because other ones would be out of fight. Like, yeah, but even even KOs. So if a street soldier or a new blood becomes KO'd, they can't recover from it. Right. They are KO'd, and okay. that gives a victory point. Right. Um, depending on the status of them. So if you've wasted them, it's more victory points. If you've KO'd them. Sometimes in s certain scenarios, it doesn't give you anything. Okay. But it's in the rumble, it does. Okay. Um, next, we'll move on to moving the citizen loop. You roll for it this time, I roll for it last time. We'll go with, she's going to move six inches. Straight that way. Straight this way, and she's going to jump over the car. She's Glad a, she's a mover. <laughs> Um, and then, as I've said, the next part will be to see the cops turn up. Okay. So I will let you do it. Um, so we'll roll a, D, a D10. The modifier that we've got is a casualty. So it's a plus one to your result. Okay. 
So because there wasn't any other major claims caused, seven plus one is so eight. So it's eight. You only turn up in a nine or a ten. Okay, so so they're fine at the moment. So that's the end of turn two. Yes. Yeah, we'll do the tidy up and then we'll be back in a wee minute. So, once again, okay. back to initiative for the game. Yep. Another turn. Oh. So go for his at this time. That's probably the only decent low we'll get <laughs> in the entire turn. The first thing I'm going to do is try and activate... The loop objective. Actually, no it's not. That's silly. The first thing I'm going to do is activate um, Little Thread. He's a, a D6. Six. And he gets a six, That's so he fine. can do what he wants. Because you can't, if you only get a, a walk, you can't initiate. No, combat. you can't initiate the combat. So even though you would have been close enough, he was just didn't have the bottle to do it at that point. The the walk movement for the two and the three came in because we wanted to keep the game going. Yeah, but I didn't want you to get any benefit. Uh -huh. Still failed. Yeah. So. Um, that that makes perfect sense. No, I, I like the way the the sort of the initiative jumps about at a random sort of point. I like, so I like random games. I'm not a big I go you go gamer, mm -hmm. um, or just sitting about. Obviously, a lot. I, I like the fact that dice always determine uh -huh. what we're doing. After moving in, it's just a roll for the combat, isn't it? Yep. So it still counts as a charge, even though he was quite close. Still a charge, so you can still get to plus one. Um, little Fred fights on a d8. And he's fighting Bull. Who he might. Who has a skill test, so uh -huh. we'll roll the d6 to try and unlock. So he doesn't get it. He doesn't so he get, doesn't it get the plus, so he just fights on his d8. I get six and I in get total. seven. <laughs> you, you would go up against a street veteran. <laughs> I'm not having any joy here at all. Um, so <laughs> it's my typical dice roll and I tell you, it happens Bill, all the time. again, is just on the 4d6 because he's armed with a knife. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's exact, so, almost exactly the same again. So again, you'll just roll to try and stop the minus to your damage roll because you're going to roll against damage. Um, now it's a tough... Isn't your it toughness. Tough? So he uses a d8. He's, yep. Little Fled has a d8 for tough. Um, He's and one. he gets a one. So you're back onto the damage. <laughs> uh, Obviously not in, invoking pizza Jesus often enough. <laughs> right. So rolling a d6 on a minus one for damage. Just the exact same as you did last time. So he's a six. Which goes down to five. Five. And he's still the same. So the result is a stunned. He's stunned. Right. A stunned means that you can't do anything, mm -hmm. you can't activate yep. while that marker's still there. Okay. You can try and remove it at the end of the turn. Um, if he's attacked, he can still fight back, but he does it on a minus to all his dice. Yeah, so his dice all go down by one. Yeah, all well, right. the results. All oh, right, so it's just yeah. a minus one modifier, not, yes. a, not a step down. Okay. Right. Because so. a lot of him being a small guy, and if he, even if he was a lieutenant and he'd taken damage, all his dice would have dropped to d6, and you can't go below the d6. Yeah. So, right, fair enough. So, I lost the fight. I lose initiative. It you, goes over yes. to you. Bill hasn't actually activated. Nope. So he can, and he doesn't need to roll his funk to carry out an attack. Because of the day in combat, combat. Yeah. so it's just a straight up fight. Okay. And as I said, you're fighting on your dice result, or your fight dice, minus one. Okay. And I'm on mine, but I'll roll my brawler first of all. And he gets a six, so he unlocks the plus one to his fight dice. Okay. So push rolls. You go for your first one. Right. So Bill is two plus one is three. So and I get three. three plus one, which is four. Uh, no, minus one, which is two. Two. So I have one. Yeah. But I can't. I've not hit you. No, yeah, you've won the fight, but you didn't hit me. And I've not really got anything that I can throw you into, so we'll just stay as we are. Okay. We just choose to stay in combat, but he's activated. Yep. Now. But you, you still won the fight, so it's still on the with, with you. Yes. We'll carry out the next fight, so I'll go with my Warlord, Tremor. 
I've used my flash, so I can't use that again. I've nothing else. So it's just a straight up fight again. Okay. But I outnumber you. So you've got plus one for Plus that. one for the outnumbering. Okay. And your guy's removed his hip, so he's fine. So he's yep. back to his D10. D10. So I'm a D10 plus one. 10, 1, 11, 2. Oh, this is not going well <laughs> at all for me. Right. So Tremor has a skill of a small package. Yep. So we'll roll a D8 to try and unlock it. To be fair, he does look like the type that would have a small package. <laughs> so he gets that, he gets the extra dice. Okay. So he's rolling on 3d6. Yep. That, that cause some more damage. So, oh. I've got one critical hit. So you that's can't save automatic. It. And you've got two other hits, so you're yep. doing two toughness dice. But um, you're his probably toughness tougher. Is, he's only d6 on his toughness. Okay. So... Um, I am looking for two fours or better. So he's fine. Yeah, he I'll just be. takes the one hit, but all his stats drop again. Yep. Um, so he's got that wound on him, and his stats go back down. Okay. And again, I won the initiative. I won the combat. So, so the initiative still, stays with me. Yep. So I'll go for the next fight. Uh huh. Which is Animal, who's my lieutenant, yep. fighting against your guy. And again, I still outnumber you because yep. of the way it's working. And my fight goes down to a D8. And my fight's a D10 plus one for outnumbering you. Yep. So I'll roll for animal fight, which is a 10 oh. plus one. <laughs> and I get a four. four. At least you got more than two. Yep. <laughs> so, so I'm used to this, don't worry. <laughs> so animal um, doesn't have any skills that he can use within a fight. Okay. Yeah, we'll reveal his good skill if we do get whatever the result is. So he's rolling 3d6 for a large weapon, he's got his crowbar. So he gets one critical hit uh -huh. and one normal hit. So you can try and save the... Okay, now how does this work when all of his stats are reduced? He's you on a d6 it reduced. For So it's d6, he can't go below d6. Okay, so he just rolls a d6, still yes. wanting a 4 though? Still wanting a 4 and gets a two, so he's taken two wounds. So, well, three, because he yeah. got a critical as well. Ah, so... Oh, no. Yeah, so he's two, sorry. So he's taken the critical, mm -hmm. and he's saved... Well, he tried to save one, and it hasn't worked. Uh -huh. So he's taken one, which takes him below a D6. Yeah, because his funk was a D8, so, so it's down to a D6. So the, the critical hit takes him below a D6, so that's a damage roll. Uh -huh. And the one that you never saved is a, a minus, minus one. one. So, so you're rolling a D6 for damage on a minus one. A five? A six. Yeah, oh, it's a six. Minus one. Just five. down to a five, sorry. So he is stunned. I actually wanted a, a KO. Yeah, I kind of figured you might have. Well, that character actually has a skill, uh -huh. which is called Natural Born Killer. So right. you can unlock, and basically he's pretty ruthless and would have killed you okay. if you were killed. Okie dokie. So you still won the fight. Still won the fight. Those two guys are activated. They're activated. I'll put tokens on them. And it's still with you. Still with me. I'll go with. Let's do a wee bit of fancy movement. We'll activate Beans. And he activates on a D6. Activation, five, so he's fine. So I'm going to move up. He's going to try, well, he's going to try and run. So you, he'll roll the D6 to get the movement. Okay. So he gets the movement. So he gets his 10 inches. Okay. Which is fine. He'll move into contact mm -hmm. with the lady, but he's moving up to the car. Yep. He needs to carry out a skill test, which is a D8 for him, test, which is the 8. So as I said, the 4 or more, it carries out the full movement, yep. and a 2 or 3, it would have moved over just to the side of the car. Yep. On a 1, it would have done anything, but he now moves in to contact with the old lady, but okay. he's not got any, um, he can't yeah. move into contact and then do the action, because he's had to run. Yeah, okay. So he's activated. And then we'll move on to Paddy from my last character. Um, his funk, Aye, funk is sorry. just a D6. A D6. It's a 5. So he's good. And he's going to run in and he's going to attack. Well, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll actually have him attack Ray Ray. Oh, okay. Because he's already stunned. Yep. 
So he will run seven. Let's see. I think I've definitely got I'm fairly seven. sure that's fine. Yeah, that was only six anyway. Didn't need to roll for that. So he's ran in. He's given him a big hook to the side of the face. Hopefully it causes some damage. So we'll roll for the fight. So my fight's only a D6 for this guy. But you've got plus one for charging and, and plus, plus one, one for outnumbering. Numbering. Yep. And I've got minus one because I'm stunned. Yes. So I'll roll for Paddy first of all. And he's got a three, so he's, his result's a five. And I get a one because of that. <laughs> it was a two, went down to a one. Right, so Paddy has won the fight. Yep. He'll roll his weapons dice. He's got two small, he's got two D6 with a small weapon. Okay. Paddy's weapon. So one hit. One hit. Now. So you can try and basically. Tough it? Toughness. So his tough on a minus is a one. D8 with a minus one. So he's fails. He's failed. And he takes he a take, wound. He takes another wound, so it's another damage roll. Um, minus. No, no minus. Even though he's stunned? Yeah. Okay. Um, he gets a four. So again, he is stunned. No, no, it's a KO. Because it's a second stun? Yeah. No, it's actually a KO. Oh, so right, he's okay. just basically KO'd, but as a, a street I, soldier. That's him done. He can't do anything. So it would be another victory point. Okay. So for this scenario, um, you get six victory points for KO a wasting a warlord. Mm -hmm. Three for KO wasting a lieutenant. Yep. And then two for each wasted gang member or one for each KO gang member. Okay. One for the first gang member, the first gang to carry out a, a key or a wasted and one for each loot marker. Mm -hmm. now, there's other things you can do in other scenarios and we'll go over that yep. um, in the post game through the yeah, yep. through there again, okay? Uh, so I'm so, fully activated now. Yep, so it passes back over to me. Um, I have two guys left to go. Um, one of them being uh, Kaleem. Uh, he's funk dice as a d6 and he gets a two so all he can do is walk <laughs> <laughs> my luck it's always my luck can I get the tape measure oh no I've got this this will do quite nicely uh, do you get these done by uh, water bases yep. as well yeah Martin does um... so yeah he'll go down there he's gonna do no man's luck he's, oh, he's gonna, gonna try and interfere with that hopefully if he gets uh, a chance. Could come your way, yeah. Um, and then I'm going to roll for um, Shogun. To break into the car. So yeah, you've got your... This is, he gets his activation, right? finally. So he'll then just carry out the, the break-in. So... His skill's a d10. Yeah, so roll your skill. Sorry. And he gets a 7, so he So he's got it. So that's now, you now in control of that loot objective. And will that stay with him? If he moves about and gets taken out, would he drop it? Yes, and right. I can then collect it. Because as, as I said, there's some other scenarios you can collect the, the tokens, but I can then just try and get them off you uh -huh. before you get off the table. Okay, so he's done that one activation. Does he still, is he no, still able to do him. a movement? He's, that's him. Yeah. Okay, so that's him activated and that's everyone done. Yes. So that's the end of turn three. That's us. We would then roll for the cops again. Okay. Oh, um, we can move the old lady first. Does the old lady move because she's in yes. contact with you? She's still trying to run away. Okay, I'll roll for her this time yep. to see which direction she's going. And it's sort of... This way? That way. So in amongst the rubbish. Um, and then... We roll with the cops. Do the modifiers from the previous rounds stay uh, active? Then? Yes. So as the game goes on, the carnage, but there's more yeah, and more the, chance. Like, yeah. like, uh, like that's because good, yeah. more more is happening. So uh -huh. the chances, the more and more it happens, the more chance the cops are going to come. Okie dokie. So we've got a wasted. We've got a break in, and that's it. Does the KO not do anything? No. No. Okie dokie. So it's plus two this time. Plus two on a D10. Nope, so still no. no cops. 
We do have a scenario, the cops start on the table, but we can discuss that one. And, and again, we'll do the tidy up and we'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, so um, we've tidied up after turn three. Um, it's gone a bit peak tongue for me. Um, is it straight back into initiative? Straight back into initiative. The cops never turned up, so we don't need to do anything. Three. 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 It's a draw. It's a draw. Just yeah. <sighs> Roll a two, and you roll someone. <laughs> My typical luck, as usual. So, I don't need to do it with this guy because he's KO'd. Um, the guy's got a stun, he never actually removed that. He could have removed that. Actually, yeah, because I didn't Recovery. actually activate him. He couldn't activate because it was stunned. Ah, right, okay. But you could have attempted to remove the stun. So is it okay if I do that just yeah, now then? Go okay. For it. So how do I do that? Um, just rolling his skill test. And that is my lieutenant. Oh, I didn't roll for the cover either. You can only remove one. Yeah. So you remove. You'll be looking to that as your lieutenant. So you'll be re yeah. re looking to remove the stun. So the stun. You would then be able to remove wounds off no. the next turn. Yeah. His skill is usually a D eight, so it's a D six. D six. Yeah. Because that's as low as it yeah. can go. And he gets a two, so it doesn't work. Doesn't work. So he is still stunned. No. He, well, yeah. You can't. On a KO, he wouldn't be able to recover again. Mm -hmm. He would have been out yeah. the game. Um, but on a stun, he's still fine. Yeah. So you can't you can't activate them, but you can I can attack them and you can fight back. Yep. So I'll attack you with my big guy, okay. my tremor. Um, he doesn't have any special abilities, but he's fighting on a D10. You'll be on a D6. Oh, rubbish! Three, two. two. So again, I've won. Yep. It's just slightly out, it's only one inch I can throw, so I can't actually do anything. So you activate and we'll stay in combat. I still got initiative. Um, we'll go with Animal. Okay. He'll attack you. And what does he attack with? Um, he's a fighter D10 and he gets a plus one for outnumbering two. So you're D6 on a minus one and I'm a 10 on plus one. Seven. And I D6. can't beat that because no. I'm on a six. Can't beat it. So you eat wins. Black. It would be minus one as well, wouldn't yes. it? D6 minus one, yeah. So, animal doesn't have any special abilities he can use. I get three D6. Okie dokie. I'll roll them because I've got a large weapon. Dice. Right. He gets two, two this hits. Time. And I get two saves. Yes, it's on a minus so one. D6, so it's two D6 minus one. So you're a damage roll again, and then a damage roll minus one for okay. the, the extra hit. Right, okay. So the, he's at a D6 at the moment, so the, that hit will take him below the D6, um, below the D6, mm -hmm. which one, it's a damage roll, and then the extra hit is minus one. Okay, I thought because he was stunned it would already be minus one on the first one. No, it's only minus one on the dice. Okay. So the first one he doesn't save. No, so that's it. It's just the damage roll. Right. So it's, it's one D6. Yeah. He's rolled a one, which is a, a wasted. So he's out anyway. Right, okay. Another one goes. It is going wrong now. So Beans will activate on a D6. He's going to try and go after the old granny. It's a 6. And so it should be within 6 inches because he was already in contact. Yeah. So he'll move in. And he's only walked. So he'll be able to do his skill test. So he's a bit muggly old lady. Yep. What a nice chap. He's a skill of D8, he's no... One. Okay. He's a four, so he's fine. And he's basically got the next objective. Okay, so he successfully mugs the wee old one. Now, if you got a one there, she'd have fought back. She would have fought back, and it can get a bit interesting. Uh -huh. What about a two or a three in that situation? Um, nothing. Just nothing, yeah. Six, just, five, five. just stays as is, and she'll obviously move at the end of that turn. Okie doke. So, he's activated. I'll activate Bull. He'll go after Kareem. So can could this guy try and coup de grace him because he's KO'd or only if he's got it as so Animal for example. He's got a special skill. He's got a natural born killer mm -hmm. and he'll 
basically change if he unlocks the skill he can change the weight the ko to be a wasted right it okay. just basically ignores the ko's and it goes straight to being a wasted so once somebody's ko'd your guys just ignore them yeah basically, basically because the idea the idea that it did of that was although there was lots of the gangs in the 70s it's killing was a big big thing as well you no know, gang fighting's one thing mm -hmm. but killing somebody's yeah but a longer jail sentence yeah <laughs> okie dokie so um we'll go with bill yep He'll activate on a D6. So he doesn't, he doesn't activate, so he can only walk. And he'll walk over. And I guess the last one I'll activate then is Paddy. Okay. And he'll be a D6 as well. So Paddy activation. It's a six, mm -hmm. so he's fine. So he can charge in, he's in six inches. Okay. Charges in, he's wanting to fight. So we, I don't have any special abilities that I can use, and I'm a fight a D6. Okay. And you, Kareem? Uh, I have a fight of a D6 as well. Cold as steel, which is a skill, and safe hands, so I can reroll the skill test. So you're plus one, I'm just the straight D6. Yeah, I'm a plus one. So rolling for Paddy, four, six. He's getting his own back now. Yep. So you've got a, a knife. Mm -hmm. So you're four d six straight away. What's your other any special? My skill on this is cold as steel. Extra d six uh, weapon dice when armed with sharp weapons. So is it is a skill test? So you can unlock that when you're okay. rolling a skill. So his skill test is a d eight. Um, needing a four the better, obviously. Gets a seven. Fine. So, so he gets it. That's five d six. 5d6. Get horrible. Needing fours as usual. And gets one, two, three normal and one critical success. Oh. Right. So my toughness is d6. So I can only save the three. So not that it's going to make much difference. Right. So I save one of them. So the criticals take me into yep. a damage roll. The other two basically mean I'm on a minus two. Okay. So no, I'm another minus two. Yeah, minus two in the roll. Mm -hmm. So three, one. He's wasted. Okay. So that's exactly what happened to me. Pretty much that, yeah. and jumped on his knife. And um, so that was your activation. You lost the fight. Yes. It now moves on to me. But yeah. you don't really have anyone left to activate anyway. No. What I need to do is I need to get him down in there. He's probably the best bet. Right, okay. So, Kareem, um, he just has a move of six as usual. So, I'm going to roll for his activation. Kareem has a funk of d6. He gets a two, so all he can do is walk. What I would say before, we never included it at the start of the rules, but there is a morale for mm -hmm. each of the forces. Ah. Um, and you do roll for it, and as, as things are going on, the, the casualties and stuff, mm -hmm. they'll ramp up on the morale. So your morale, you roll for it at the start, it gives you a score uh -huh. um, out of 10. So it can either be eight, nine or 10, mm -hmm. and it will reduce for every single thing that happens. When it gets to um, a four, you basically roll for it to see if your, your four stays on the table. Right, okay, so at this point I would be... I would, I would, I would say that you, it depends on what you've, if you had a 10 or whatever. So for example, um, you've not lost your warlord, but you lost your lieutenant, mm -hmm. so you would roll a d6. Mm -hmm. And on a 1 or 2, you get a minus 3 to your morale. For 3 or 4, you get a 2, 5 or 6, you get a 1. And as I say, as soon as it gets to the level, you, you basically check to see if your guys stay on the table or if it drops away. before 4. So, in that circumstance, if you fail the morale check, you just take the guys off the table and Yeah, you would basically lose the game. Right, okay. So if it was a campaign game, it's not like, in some games, um, once you lose the morale, your guys just disappear off the table and it ends. And other ones, you actually have to try and get them off the table yeah. safely. So. Well, no, so the, the, the idea would be that they would just run away. Okay. Um, because as I say, killing and stuff, a lot mm -hmm. of these guys wouldn't stay around either. Uh -huh. If they killed somebody, the guys that have done it, they would probably run because yeah. the chance, as we've seen, they've not done it yet, but the chances of the cops turning up mm -hmm. and stuff. 
he can walk up to six, but he can't go into combat. Does he need to stay about an inch away? Uh, no. Well, you can stay where he is. If I hadn't activated, I could have reacted. Yeah. But I have activated. So, so can't he can't do, do the reaction because he's been activated. Okie dokie. Yeah. Um, I'll chuck a dice for my boss. And all we can do is walk as well. They are obviously demoralised. Your, your plan had not worked here at all because you were trying to outnumber me and yes. kill him. Yes. <laughs> so that's both my remaining guys activated. So that will be the end of that turn. And we don't need to roll for the, the woman moving because she's off the table now. Yep. Um, um, there's nothing, no recoveries. Um, the only one it would be would be the, the police. Right, so what are we looking at for the police? So rolling a d10, we've got one, two, three casualties, plus a break-in, plus a mugging. Minus five, uh, oh, plus, plus five. five to the result. And we get a five. It's a ten. Plus five, that's ten. The cops turn up. So the cops turn up, okay. Okay, so the way that they, we go through it, we would both roll. Okay. So you roll your current leader's funk dice. So okay. The idea is that if your leader's been taking hits, it's going to reduce. Yeah. See if your leader's gone, would you use your lieutenants? The, yes, the second right. in command. Okie dokie. So, both on a d10. One. Ah, three. three. So, the cops now turn up in my deployment zone. I should think so too, you're the one that's been all so yep. terribly violent. And as I said previously, they don't do anything this turn. Mm -hmm. At the end of the next turn, they'll move. Either person can move them because they will always move next to the to the nearest gang member. Okay. Which is this guy. Yep. Um, and when the, when they get within the distance, they'll try and arrest them. Mm -hmm. And basically, he can roll for a skill test to see whether or not he wants to um, okay. defy them. Passes the skill test, he runs away. But the cops can then actually try shoot. and shoot him. Uh -huh. um, the cops are the same as any other gang member. They have to activate, so they've got stats as well. So they've okay. got funk dice and they basically need to activate. Okie dokie, so we are done in the end of turn four. Yep. Um, just a wee bit of tidy up and then we'll be back to you again. So, back to initiative. Okie dokie. Um, Ready to try and get away for the cops now. Ian Rowland. Five. Three. Three. Right. So I need to try and get out of here. So the first one I'm going to go for is Beans, and he wants to try and get away, so I'll try and activate him. So he's a four, so he's fine. I'll roll for his run, so you get two, so you can move it. So with Beans, I'll go on and look at moving Tremor, get okay. him away, don't want him getting arrested. So he's a nine, and then I'll get him to run. Seven. And then I'll look at moving animal. Eight. Three, so you can only walk. And he'll walk that way. And we'll activate Bull on the last one. And he won't, he'll just move it as well. So what do you now go for? I'm going to do something exceptionally stupid. Okay. But I'll just because like I want to see how things happen, right. what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate um, Kareem. Kareem. Uh, he's got a d6. And he gets a three, so all he can do is walk. Are you trying to attack the cops? No, he's not attacking the cops. He's like, we need help, man, we need oh. help. But he's gonna get arrested anyway, I would imagine. So he's gonna go down that way, because I want to see how the interaction with the cops okay. works. Um, and then the other guy, not Shaolin, Shogun, sorry. Um, he's a d10 for his activation. He gets a four, so he can do two things. So he can attack. Yep, nice and guy. he wants revenge, so he's going to charge in on your main, big guy. main man. Right, so he does have a special ability. He's got a heavy rep, so because he's obviously a big guy, mm -hmm. you need to basically have a bit of confidence, so you need to pass a skill test to attack him. Okay. Skill test on Shogun is a d10, and he gets a five, so he passes. So it's, fine. so it's just basically into the combat, 
Um, you're fighting on a plus one. Okay. For charging. That's it. And I'm just on a D10. Okay, right. So I've just had a wee look at his um, skills there, but a, I will roll D10 plus one, get 10. <sighs> Two. So you win. <laughs> yeah. So Shogun has won the combat. Yeah. He has Kung Fu Master, so which is. One dice. Uh, extra d6 weapon dice when fighting or when hitting a rival yeah okay. so he gets one gets one d6 no matter what he's armed with okay. he's unarmed so he's got one d6 for as well right and he's got a special ability while he's unarmed fists of fury. fury so he needs to unlock that as a skill test uh, his skill test again is a d10 and he gets nine so, so he passes three d6 so is that on top of the one or is that just in total? So that's a total three. So he's got the one plus two more. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he's rolling three dice. Yep. And he gets so one, he gets critical one critical and one normal. Yep. So I'm quite a tough guy. So I'll roll my D. I've got a D10 toughness. I'll roll that. So I've saved that one. So I take the one critical hit. Okay. Which basically, as I said, Brings down all my stats. Mm -hmm. So it does have effect on him. Yep. Uh, and that's the end of the combat, and that's pretty much the end of the turn as yeah. well. Okay. So it comes to the end of the turn, there's no objectives, we'll move on to the cops. Okay. Right. So the cops will have to activate. So roll a d6. Um, I'll try so the stats, the stats are in the, the book. Okay. Uh, a so three for the first they one. They don't actually activate. But ah, let's do you roll just them say, both in the one? Yeah, they act as a unit. Right, okay. So let's say they did activate. Yeah, just so we can see what right. happens. So the, the cops would move up as normal. Okay. Right, and they're within the range to try and carry out an arrest. Okay. The cops then roll with a funk. So their funk is a d6 again. A two. So, again. A four. So they've carried out the funk. So they've tried to arrest. Mm -hmm. You would roll your funk. And he gets a six. So he's successfully defied the cops. Okay. So he can now move up to six inches away in any direction. So you can almost like lure them up the table towards other people. Yeah, but they're, al they're always going to go to the nearest. So uh -huh. They'll always go towards that guy. Um, but now that they can, they can actually look at shooting him. Okay. But it would be in the next turn. Right. So you can obviously try and get away again. But you can only try and shoot him, not the others. It's um, only if you defy the cops. Is there a stack card for them or is it just that yeah. in the book? Thing? So it's in the book and it's also available as a download. It was right. going to be one of the, they never reached it as a stretch goal mm -hmm. to, do, to do it as a print. Right, okay, okay. So it's maybe one we'll do for the next one. Um, so that's the end of that turn. It's tidy up again and. Do you wish to continue? Do, I think that would probably be the end of the game, but it's up to yourself. Okay, well I'll tell you what, then let's just, for, for the end of this, just to wrap it up, let's see if he stayed there and ran away, how would the shooting work? Let's just go over Go that. carry out a ranged attack. Okay. Say the cops decide to shoot him, just so we can go over it. So they'll declare the target, mm -hmm. which is Kareem in this case. The cops will also draw their pistols. Okay. The ranged attack is a D8. Roll. So they get a six, uh -huh. so they basically carry it out. It is just basically a, a straight hit. You can only react okay. if you've not done anything. Yep. So the cops would just hit you straight away okay. with a four D6. There's one success in there. One success. So you would roll your toughness dice the exact okay. same way that you would normally. Tough would be a D6. And he gets he a pass. Saves it. So, uh, Ricochets off a belt buckle. Yeah, well, like it's, that, it, they've basically they've, they've successfully shot at him, mm -hmm. but they've missed. Um, you can obviously react if, yeah. if they miss on the, the activation, mm -hmm. but in in this case, if it if it does get him, it can it can be lethal. Mm -hmm. It's not always. It is meant to be quite a fast game in regards yeah. to that. Okay, so there's not really a great deal more we could do in amongst this. Yeah. The way it is to show. I mean, I, I, do you think we've covered I think pretty we have, much yeah. everything I think, from yeah. the basics? I think it's stuff. gave quite a good overview of the core mechanics. Okay, okay. We've seen quite a, a bit of blood spilt. Yeah. We've seen a lot of objectives collected. We'll tidy it up um, and then we'll go through and we'll talk about all the, the ins and outs of everything else that we've got going on at the okay. moment. Okay. Okay. Cheers, guys. Cheers.
Thank you. So how did that go? It's good fun. <sighs> Didn't go well for me. <laughs> Never does. You actually ever hear of this? Just your end speech every time. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly caught it. Um, got quite bloody. Yeah, uh, I mean, wasn't particularly playing to win. That's my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking to it. We were just trying to show off the way the game works. So, I, I, I really like it. The mechanics are and really interesting it's very different to most of the stuff I've played before so I mean you were watching the entire way through so what did you think <laughs> I like the look of it I can't wait to get a game I have to admit I am contemplating shelling out already yes. <laughs> there is there is other scenarios in the, in the rule book uh-huh. and the idea is to take it away from just being a big battle mm-hmm. yeah. because it can get bogged down in just being a big fight but there is ways to try and make it spread out like, so I've got a scenario there called Blackout. And it's based on the 1977 blackout that actually happened in New York. And the way that that game starts is, as we see with the cops turning up, the cops actually start the game in the middle. Right, OK. OK. And there's various um, objectives on the table. And the idea is everyone's out looking. The cops are trying to stop them. So it makes it it's no longer just a big battle, mm-hmm. you're, you're trying to collect these objectives and remove them from the table. Um, there's another one called the big score. Wait, is there a way in, in yeah. that one where it's dark and all that, is there a way to use um, set distraction like throwing a glass bottle over there well, no, and sending the cops over in the opposite the direction? Game, the game, like, so all the distances and everything is based on that it's always dark. Yeah. So it's very hard to see and stuff. We never factored anything in, in regards to all the lights being out, but it's, the, the idea is the game's almost dark anyway. Okay. And the cops will just try to rest. <laughs> so I uh, so you, the thing is it's pretty much always set at night then. Yes. Right, the okay. game's always at night. Right. right. There is there is rules in there that you can choose to set it during the daytime if you wish and it would increase things like society and um, when it comes to ranged weapons and that. Okay. Um now you've said there's the two those two gangs there um, that we were using. Yep. You've said there's rules to make up your own, your own gangs, yeah. your own gangs and stuff. So, um, I take it. Do you is there a sort of set stat, or do you pay particular points to make up a character? Well, you're basically based on the rank. Mm-hmm. Each of the ranks have a score that they're allowed, and then you basically assign that score to the dice that you want. Okay. So you might want a guy who's a good fighter, so you give him a good fight dice Mm -hmm. but then it's detrimental to some of these other skills so it all depends on how you want to balance it out and we've tried to do that with some of the characters that we've already got Mm -hmm. as we've seen some of the guys have really got a really high skill skill, Mm -hmm. but some of them might not be that good at fighting Mm -hmm. but they might not be good at fighting but some of them might be tough so even though you've got that chance that you might not win the fight if you do lose it you're going to be hard to take down yeah so you can take a kick and basically in the box sets do you get the stack cards for pre-generated gangs yes yeah. so all the ones that we have assigned to try and balance it out um, but you can just basically create your own and try to find out a way to do um, generate your own cards there's templates on the website mm-hmm. so if you're kind of good with photoshop or even paint you can yeah. download them and assign your own because they, they basically come blank um, but the, the guys at Crooked Dice have got a really good one where they can upload the stats on their website and it downloads a card. That's very yeah, cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interactive, like you upload a photo, they, it was a, one of their fans actually created it for them, so I need to find someone that's good at making websites and be able to do those kind of things. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not good at coding <laughs> stuff, no, I'm, I'm a techie. I'm a coder and I don't know how to do it. So you were... Uh, Looking at another Kickstarter at some point. Another Kickstarter. So, as I said, the artwork's coming through at the moment. Um, Daniel's been supplying that and it keeps coming. So, I think there's a, there's a whole new batch. Once I get more of the Jackabikes out of the way, mm-hmm. I'll get Nick to do some more of the sculpts for Street Wars and then we can take it from there. So, I don't want to give a definitive date mm-hmm. because I can't. I need, yeah. to, I need to work with what Nick's available to do as well. Absolutely. Um, once I get a I don't need to get the full range, I'll just get a handful of the figures and then that's enough to show off on the Kickstarter along with the artwork and hopefully the fact that I've been able to deliver 
a Kickstarter to live it on time, look at doing another one, somebody else, mm-hmm. people, more, more people might go, we could take a shot on this one. Well, I, I definitely think more people should get into this, because it is a cracking game, and it, it does, sort of, as you say, it fills a, a, a niche in the market that there wasn't particularly yeah. something there for. The Jacobites you said you've got coming out, uh, they, are they available yet, or are they still in No, production? so that's just finished the Kickstarter, okay. finished last month. So it's basically getting, it's getting worked through at the moment. Okay. So there's more work in progress shots, hopefully soon from the sculptor that we'll be updating all the backers with. Do you have um, a light backer option for that, or is it? Once, so I'm working on it, I'm building a pledge manager at the moment. Once that's up and running, I will look at doing a pre-order. Um, I don't know, but I'm not too sure whether I'll do it as a late backer because obviously some of these bigger companies can do late backers and still give everyone the freebies. Yeah. And I want to try and I'll maybe give them a discount, but I'll maybe not give them the freebies. So it's like a pre-order. Yeah. Uh-huh. You get them cheaper, but you don't get the freebies because I want to make sure that the guys who backed me on the Kickstarter yeah. are them. doing something yeah. and they're getting the reward yeah. for it. Yeah. No, I need, yeah, to, I, need exactly. to help, I need to help them. Absolutely. Help them. Yeah. That's cool. Um, one of the other things I was going to ask about as well was um, likes of you've got the um, the last season of the old woman for the the sort of citizen um, yep. objective markers. So like um, you've got them from the Reaper miniatures Reaper. So in the states, uh, th- there's nothing to stop you using like if you've got some nice models from another company. There's nothing to stop you making them up as a gang if you not want at to. All. No, yeah. not at all. Because I've I'm looking at. Um, cricket dice again. We've got a set of centurions, <laughs> <laughs> and there's enough of them to make a whole gang. Awesome. And I'm going to make them as a gang, and I'm going to make them as a like a private school, uh-huh. a private set of school girls. Yeah. So, is there any um, ranges you can suggest for expanding on what you've already got? Is there things that you already know about out there that you? It's just, so Crooked Dice is one of them, um, there's quite a lot of figures in there, so I use the uh, Crooked Dice Cops, mm-hmm. the other one is my friend Stuart at Studio Miniatures, he's yeah. got quite a lot of figures in there that we're actually going to do as MVPs in our rules, uh-huh. so it saves me getting those figures, he's got quite a few figures, like yep. a, a non-machete kind of figure, uh-huh. so I could do a card for him and somebody could get Stuart's figure, it means that somebody could play on my rules, mm-hmm. that's cool. Now, the other thing about it that I was going to say as well is obviously what we've done there on the table was very pared down. It was, um, you've got your one commander, which is standard, then you had a lieutenant and three soldiers. There was no new bloods in amongst that. Normally, your gang would sit at about, what, about eight miniatures or something? Eight miniatures is like the standard yeah. that we've went for. Mm-hmm. What would um, that normally include? Uh, your warlord, two lieutenants? Warlord, two lieutenants, one new blood, and the rest made up with the street soldiers. So that's what's in the stack cards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Each, each gang's got that. Okay, okay. A, a campaign starts off with roughly about four miniatures for you to then build up your right. gang as you go through it. Because within the rules is a whole map in New York, and the idea is a campaign as you go and you're selecting the next turf and you, you fight it out, and whoever gains that will get some money and you can use that to. I might have to look at a G3 campaign for this. Yeah, I <laughs> have a campaign where you've got to get back to Coney Island. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, um, obviously like this is available on your website yes. at the moment. We'll have a link to, to where you can buy this down below. But as we said earlier on, um, we can't stress enough how awesome this prize is. I mean, you're getting... 65 quid's worth of stuff yep. for nothing and all you need to do is subscribe and leave a comment on this video and you've got a chance of winning that great prize yeah very much so and, and again I played this at the club with you on Tuesday yeah. Yeah. last week and, and I said five minutes after finishing it well, it wasn't even after fish, finishing it it was I'm buying this at some point I want <laughs> this game warning. that's why we're taking it around the shows and mm-hmm. hopefully more and more so do you know where any shows you're going to be at in the future? The, the, future? the next show that I've got is Claymore, which is in August in Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 the games are sold at the shows by studio managers, so rather than me, I'm, yeah. doing, the, I'm doing the games mm-hmm. and I get Stuart to do the trade side of it. And you were at Salute this year? I was at Salute this year. And you're planning on next year as well? I should hopefully be there, um, don't see it being an issue. 
hopefully have two demo games next year. Grand. We're hoping to be at Salute next year as well. I was there this year and can previous years. So mm -hmm. We're trying to get some video footage next year. Yep. Yeah. So interviews. Um, I want to get that. I've never managed to make it along, so I'm hoping to get to, to this one. Um, the other thing about a game like this is it's not um, throwing money at some big company that's got tons of money. You're supporting a local business. It's all. Um, it, it's not a big company. It's just yourself. No, it's just me. It? This so is. Um, I work full time. This is just something on the side that I wanted to do. And I like my wife would wish it would make me money, but <laughs> it's certainly not. But this is exactly what Kickstarter was supposed to be about, wasn't yeah, it? It was so supposed to be about the wee guy getting a chance to get his game out there. Or it. Whatever. So any, any money, same with the Jacobites, any of the money that I'm making from it, I'm actually looking at what do I do next, rather mm -hmm. than saying, oh, that's that money. So, like, so we want to move on to the, the government troops. But mm -hmm. the idea is that. I'm hopeful once I get all this out there might be some money there that I can just get them sculpted and rather than doing a Kickstarter that's going to take six months or seven months to deliver mm -hmm. we can maybe do a quick Kickstarter and just basically use it as a pre-order and deliver it within a month mm -hmm. no and say this is the other available you can buy them but that's where the money from the mm -hmm. first one and out with any profit yeah so, so it's going into bit you yeah, invest into the business lot, to, to get more out of it next time. A lot of these things selfishly are figures that I want. That's why most people do these things. And it's not as though me saying I want to do this to make make it a successful business. I want to do it to make it a successful business in the fact that it can maybe support itself mm -hmm. and it can get new figures out there that I and others want. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. So you were saying earlier about possible expansions you've got in yep. in the back of your mind? Yes, no, this is... <laughs> um, I've been... I'm looking to do the testing for the first expansion. So it's going to be two expansions in the future. Okay. Um, there was a lot of voting as part of the Kickstarter that we did, and one of the ones that won it was um, the Gangs of New York theme. Mm -hmm. So New York set in the 1850s. Yep. But the idea of that is that it will be... Uh, a possible PDF update that w you'll pay for. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be any figures, there's figures already available. I maybe do one or two figures, it may be a freebie for anyone that wants to support it, something like that. But Brigade Miniatures Lawn um, in, Amer in America, what we'll do, we contacted him mm -hmm. and he's willing to let me use his figures throughout the rules. I've already got loads of them. so. Cool. I've previously built a huge five points that I gave away, so I'm going to look at building something else for it. Um, and as I say, that will be a, a PDF that will sell on the website. Is a, but it will also not just be a carbon copy of what we've got. It, you'll need the Street Wars to play it, mm -hmm. but it will have extras. So the idea is to increase the game size. Okay. So rather than being all character miniatures, it will be a bigger game, mm -hmm. bigger gang game. But like I said, the Street Soldiers will be groups okay. rather than a single figure. So any hits that get applied are get applied to the figures and it removes figures. So one hit will remove one figure from that group rather than that group or well, that character taking one hit. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a difference in that and that's the idea is to just do a bigger game. You could also do a small game if you wanted in the same setting mm -hmm. but the, the idea is that that's going to be an, up, an update to the rules. The other one will be a free one, um, which I didn't go for against really excited <laughs> for <laughs> Not just me. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to say. Um, and it's, it's a totally free one, and it's a big interest of mine, and it's going to be a Turtles one. <laughs> nice. Um, the idea is that we will look at increasing the stats. I'm still trying to work out how I want to do it. Um, to have obviously low level guys that don't have these increased stats but you do have certain guys that can move a lot quicker i.e. the Foot Clan, the Turtles and stuff and obviously Rocksteady and Bebop and so much stronger. <laughs> so are you looking at like going up to a D12 or...? I'm not too sure so I, 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 think, I think the big focus might be on the movement and stuff and the, the jumping. Right. Um, whether or not I do that for the fighting. The, the, the fighting is quite harsh or brutal as it is uh -huh. so it, it, everything's to do with the dice rolls yeah 
we're throwing five dice here and getting really rubbish rolls. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's not a, that's not the rules for that. It's just our dice. Yeah, the thing with the, uh, we're going up to a D twelve on it, it gives you that extra level of yeah, wound you can definitely. take for the instance. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's something like, that we might look at. Yeah. You know, especially for those big guys. Uh huh. No, the, the, the biggest issue is me thinking, what the hell do they do with Shredder? He's that powerful, and in the in the, in the they, no, they didn't fight him mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. No, and it, it for me the key it's a scenario and how how I, how I get the how I get them moving about and fighting the foot and. I was gonna say the key thing for Shredder would be that he's probably assisting the ability of everyone around him. Yeah. Really tough and impenetrable, but if you you basically take away his abilities to assist yeah. other people. Assist so the the idea has to be me delivering it in the scenario and the idea that you're not always looking to basically beat Shredder mm-hmm. by beating him up. You need to beat Shredder by foiling his plans. Yeah. And that's where the scenario comes into it and what the story is that we're trying to tell. Yeah. And you're you know whether Shredder's planting bombs or something and you need to deactivate mm-hmm. them. That's how you defeat Shredder. You don't just you can't the turtles can't go in and fight them because yeah. as we've seen they always they don't yeah. always come out good. So like what you could do in that respect then as well is you could have one where you've got Splinter on the table and Shredder on the table they're not fighting they're just buffing yeah and, and then no debuffing commands, because got, like, so we've got the command rules already uh-huh. they can be issuing commands and yeah. certain things so I need to hopefully start testing on that soon mm-hmm. I've got all the figures for it uh, so if you need any play testers I'm sure <laughs> <you'll be laughs> for them yeah, yeah there's, quite, there's quite a few guys um, there's a lot of guys within the Street Wars community mm. and when we mention the turtles a lot of them are like yeah <laughs> um, again if you're local um, you're handy at G3 yep. and so G3 kind of suits I was at Tradeston for a while right um, but I'm pretty much solely G3 now Okay, so if you're, if you're local to Glasgow, you can generally come along to G3 on comment on the, the G3 gamers page and arrange a demo if you want, I suppose, yeah. Definitely, I'm always up for that. Cool. Fantastic. <laughs> well, we'll get you back in soon and have a, a proper full-on game. Yeah, do a proper battle report. Cool. And then just before you go to Kickstart as well, we'll get you back in then and we'll we'll have a look at the other stuff you've got going Sounds at that good. point. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for being here on the table. (laughs) Um, As I said, guys, subscribe, hit the bell, hit like, comment. Um, Comments are good because it gives you the chance of winning. Yeah, definitely. Um, Comment on this one. We don't know what we'll be doing at the moment. We're not even going to take a guess at it, but we'll see you again soon with another game. See you soon, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye.